Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity in the upper left-hand corner as the pink Protoss. Very uh, nice alliteration. We have Finlandia Vodka, aka Rota, and at the 6 o'clock location we have Machine as Wubba Lubba, I believe, from Rick and Morty. And he will be the Beluzer 6 o'clock location. I'm not sure who forwarded this replay to me. They did it in sort of a... This might be either one of them that gave me this replay. We'll see. Could be a fun one. I do want to highlight Rota here. We have not seen him before. He's a nice guy. And he streams not super often, but he did make the Rota Big Fat Pack, uh, UMS plaque. So if you go and search for Rota UMS Pack or something along those lines on Google, you'll find a huge packaging of all sorts of UMS maps for Brood War. In fact, I should check some of those out. And Rota, you know, he, he doesn't stream super often, but when he does stream, it's a fun stream. And he actually haven't seen him play all that often. I know he does King of the Hills with all the other guys as well. And, you know, it's fairly well known in the community. Zerg Overlord is going to scout that probe coming right off the bat. And I like what Rota did. He was like, okay, I see. I was going to go ahead and go pylon first. I was going to go ahead and knock uh, this in the door. But now that I know exactly what his positioning is, even though I was going to go pylon and try to sneak that without the Nexus, instead I'm going to put down a precautionary forge because I know that machine has scouted me right off the bat. And I like, this is, I think that's an intelligent move. So, and you can see the way machine responded is, is he actually, he went over pool. We'll see if he actually per saves larva for zerglings. And the trick is, is as machine, let's, let's kind of check as he moves up, all he's going to see is the pylon when, actually, never mind, it's going to be ways off. He's going to see this pylon. He's going to see that forward. So he might not build zerglings right off the bat. This is going to be a slower economic start. We'll have to see what the decision making is on his side of things. But Probe is going to be in the base. Is actually going to get bought Whoa, for a second. Yep, there. Able to slide by. Machine still trying to block the ramp, but the Probe does manage to sneak through. And this is what you'll see some players do. They'll move two two probes, two probes, two drones out on 300. One to send out the scout and two to try to push back that Probe so that Nexus gets down without harassment. Rhoda's still wanting to stick around to get a good look at the Larva count so he knows whether he needs to plot. It looks like he does have one precautionary cannon being built and we see no zerglings from machine at this stage actually sorry two zerglings just to deal with the scout i think feeling that rota had a really solid scout inside of his base he's going to opt to play a little bit safe rota sneaking by seeing that natural expansion let's see if he moves on to the third that is oftentimes what zerg will do just so they can kind of get an idea of what their opponent is doing cannon i do not think is in range of that overlord so overlord should be able to sneak uh, straight there and we'll see if yeah there's the gateway to create that front door seal and a nexus behind it. So just a single cannon protecting that front door, which is going to be sufficient. And we do see a third, or sorry, a uh, move of the drone to that three o'clock base. I think I'm gonna see if he got inside there. Oop, oop. He has not seen that hatchery location yet, but this drone is on the loose and that is going to be critical to see this hatchery that's now planting. So we're seeing three hatchery. This is almost, I'm wondering, I almost feel like the versus Terran matchup has to some degree influenced the versus Zerg matchup. Oh, this is going to be close. Does he see it? He does, in fact, see the hatchery. So now he knows he's going up against early three hatch play. And the question is, is how does he respond? So Machine is basically saying, I'm going to play a more defensive, macro-oriented position. You're going to have to come at me. He's building two additional Zerglings right there. We do see an assimilator that's finished, cybernetics core going down. Oftentimes, this is kind of where it's this style that gave rise to the Bisu build, kind of the early Forge Fast expand with Dark Templar and High Templar uh, to really try to peek out, get a couple kills here, deny map coverage, allow an easy third on low unit counts. But we will see what Machine does comparative, or we'll see what Rota does comparatively, <clears throat> comparatively, comparatively to deal with this. That Overlord is going to be able to sneak in and get a good scout, only that, but that Cybernetics Core is in such a position, it's going to take a while for him to go ahead and sneak up and see it. I'm wondering if we're going to see a Dragoon first before a dedication to tech. We'll see momentarily. If first sell is being produced, that might be wise because four Zerglings are making their way across the map. And this is a situation where Rota has three hatcheries down. That's a lot of production and he can sustain a lot, a lot of production as just pure Zerglings go. So it's possible we could see a front door breach. But two zealots going to move their way across the field. Seven, or Stargate moving its way. Overlord making its way out. There was a second Overlord on the front door. And that's two Overlords under threat from that first Corsair. The question is, is will Rota be able to get any additional scouting information from his end before this Corsair pops out? And will Machine do anything sneaky in the interim? I don't think he will. He's actually plopping down an Evolution Chamber. So I'm not sure if this Evolution Chamber is more to do the responsive thing it could be twofold. It could be, I'm just going to go ahead and be responsive 
to and put down some spores or something along those lines to try to nullify the threat of a Dark Templar. By the way, good pack of Zerglings out there. So that's eight with more coming up to 10. Two, only two Zealots in this Sim City to defend this. Otherwise, a third Zealot should be on the way. And I think this with the Sim City and these few Zealots, that should be fine. But I think Machine is sending that statement. Yeah, it's going to take something on your end to pull out of this. We do see a Spire being plopped down. So I don't think that's just... I don't think this Evolution Chamber is just for uh, defensive purposes. I think what this is for is to maybe sneak some early upgrades. I will we'll keep an eye on that, though. It is possible he plopped it down precautionarily and has now opted to maybe not do that. Anyway, first Corsair is out, and we do have a robotics facility just finishing its warp in the natural expansion, plus weapons one are upgrading, and a shuttle. And I kind of like this maneuver because even if we do not see Reavers, even if we don't see Reavers, Rhoda getting a good scout in here, by the way, you might miss some overlords as a result of it, but there's nothing to protect them out in the field. And it looks like, a yeah, it was just a protective spore colony at the natural expansion, but there's no Zerglings or anything like that. I think once the, Zer the I think Machine had the timing for the Zerglings with the Dark Templar, and when the Dark Templar wasn't there, he's like, okay, he's up to something else that's sneaky. And I'm almost wondering if Rhoda, what he's going to do is he's just going to plop a couple little Zealots, skip any additional tech units, and just... Yeah, run in with the zealots he has on the ground, wait for reinforcements to sneak in here to provide initial front door defense because his front door will be a little bit exposed and use the fact that Machine is trying to play very, very late, very, very light, I should say, on the overall army count to get some free drone kills by doing sort of an elevator around the map. He's going to have to contend with a couple mutalisks and it looks like some scourge. So I think the machine has an idea or eyes on this. And I take it back. We did in fact see a robot. I missed the robotics facility. There's robo the robo at the main getting speed upgrade. So he's in fact transitioning into Corsair Reaver and Rhoda's going to end up losing that first Corsair, which is actually significant because there is a huge amount of mutalisks making way across the map. And this is, again, this almost feels like an adjustment on TVZ style, but with some additional hatcheries to kind of balance things out. And it's almost like, yeah, TVZ and PV or ZVP in PVT are kind of, con or PV, uh, you guys get what I'm saying. <laughs> I should just say it out instead of trying to do the acronym. Mutalisks on top of that cannon, only a single Corsair right there, but we do have the shuttle making its way across, so that might be able to provide, well, this might be a sacrificial reaver that's going to save Rhoda's main, or maybe it's just going to be a tit for tat. There's three more Corsairs that were, were produced, so a single cannon, I think a handful, looks like only one, two, two probes have been killed in the meantime. This is not where you want to engage here, though. Some nice microbi machine to spread this out, and I think those Corsairs are going to get taken out. A second cannon being warped in, but on Rota's side of the map, he's dropping to a very thin mineral line. I don't know that machine has eyes on this, though. Losing some drones right there. Now the mutalists are backing off as a second, as an additional Corsair is popping out, and unfortunately, yeah, so now the mutalists are going to have to back out. Some Zell's dropping. Looks like that shuttle is getting hit. Some Zerglings taking care of one Zealot, but they're not on top of the second one. And let's see how many kills that second one can get. So he's got one kill. Any disruption of mining is critical right here. Rhoda, you, you can see he's microing because he's got a bit of a bank growing. Engaging the single Zealot right there. And it looks like he, critically, he's going to be able to sneak out with that shuttle. And that's going to allow him to build additional Reavers. Perhaps provide additional harass. And critically, that provided him some nice breathing room to get some more Corsairs out. Some more cannons down. And some more units on the ground to try to defend against Machine. Templar Archives now being planted. He does have Citadel of Dune, getting level 1 leg speed, also plopping down some additional gateways, but the critical thing is, is he's expended two Zealots out of his overall count. I'm not sure, and I think he's going to try to transition into that level 1 weapons, level 1, or level 1 weapons actually has not been upgraded, so I take that back. He's just going to go, or never mind, he did finish level 1 weapons, I just missed it. So he's just going to go for that leg speed Corsair front door assault, but with these Mutalisks, Honestly, with these mutals there to defend with the Corsairs to basically push them off. Shuttle making it back from the main base, by the way. These five hatch or sorry, four hatcheries? Are we five? Five hatcheries worth of production. I feel like Machine's going to be safe. Plus, he's getting that level one uh, range attack. I don't... Uh, he does have the Hydralis done down, and he's got a sizable army. He's looking safe in the overall supply count. Plus, he's got a great mix of units. He's got the Scourge, just in case that shuttle sneaks around. I love the Zergling at a potential expansion to take from Rhoda. He's getting level one armor, and I think Rhoda is correctly reading the situation where he needs to just go for a ground pound sort of build and maybe, hopefully, sneak out some sort of harass. Now he's got a single Reaver with Corsair X, uh, Escort, and he's going to have to flee because that's two Corsairs down immediately 
Fortunately, some of these Mulus are weakened from before, but they're all in flight. Need to get back to home base and defend over that cannon. That is going to send Machine back home. But look at all of these ground forces in the meantime. And it looks like the Mutalists actually trying to sneak in while those Corsairs were in flight and maybe picked off a probe. I might have missed that. But this is a sizable army. And this is kind of like, I'm not going to say this is a contain, because this isn't a contain, but it's almost like a soft contain, you know what I mean? Where you just have the mobility, you have the army, you have the speed, you have the production. So Machine and Firm control this match, also taking the 3 o'clock, he's got the speed upgrade on the Overlords, just in case there were some DTs that were going to sneak out there. Level 1, speed has been, re or sorry, level 1 weapons, armor still in the way, speed has been upgraded, Psy storm has been upgraded. These Zealots making their way around, maybe they can sneak out th here, but... Machine has been on top of it, dealing with the shuttle, with the Mutalisks. Rhoda gathering up a sizable Zealot army in the front. He's almost got kind of a neat cross pattern here. Up to six gateways, adding his seventh, and I, I'm going to say he's got to, I think he's going to have to win this. Just because of Machine's just dominant economic position, he's going to have to win this with one big push. And we'll see if he can get it done. Dropping off some Zealots to try to disrupt this expansion. Fortunately, one, there's not a lot of Zealots, to, there's not a lot of drones to kill here secondarily. Only a single drone kill for three zealots and a shuttle. Not a great exchange. Plus, Machine has to feel like, okay, now that that shuttle's taken care of, I don't have to worry about as much harass. And I just want to point this out. Look at shuttles, or look at shuttles. Look at Machine's vision. Look at Machine's vision across this map. He's got great visual coverage. And just now, <laughs> I take it back. Additional shuttles moving out with tons of zealots. So this is how he's going to try to counter this. And honestly, I'm wondering if this is an opportunity for a machine to sneak back in this with just attacking Rhoda's front. He does have an army positioning there. There is only a single reaver, but if these mules get on top of that reaver, bait it out and get on top of it, that could be all she wrote. There's only a single Corsair. Machine diving on top of There's a lot of cannons there, though. That is a lot of cannons. These zealots just wrecking everything in the main. The spires down might be able to get the lair, so it's going to be a base trade situation. Machine should get the better end of that. Working on that gateway. Gateway's down. Zealots peeling through. The Zealots are devastating everything here. Going for the Evolution Chamber. I'm not sure that's going to work out. Both players in the red. Huge side storm on the front. All sorts of Hydralis smelting. And that is going to push Machine back. And I think... Wow. I feel like... Rhoda got the better end of that exchange altogether. If he can pick down that layer, that would be huge bonus. Huge bonus. A bunch of Hydralisks moving in gonna lose his spawning pool he lost his spire losing critical tech did not lose the lair fortunately for him a significant amount of drones the one critical thing here though and it looks like i'm not sure if the shuttles got taken out no the shuttles are still alive so there's still harassment that can happen that's still a lot of zealots and keep in mind rhoda still has a two mining bases even though he's not in a position to take a third still he still might be able to sneak to turn this into a winning attack while Machine is licking his wounds. But Machine has all sorts of expansions up. He can just use a single round of larva with the bank he had in minerals to get his economy back up and running. So it is going to be a very, very tight window. Very tight window. Four shuttles! What? Four shuttles from Rhoda. This is almost the level of trolley. Level 2 weapons are upgraded. Only a skeleton crew of High Templar to defend the front. This is a ballsy maneuver. Is he going to morph to an Archon? No, he's just going to try to defend the front with High Templar, nothing else. He's just counting on the fact that reinforcements are going to be able to defend the front and that he's going to... This is a this is kind of a Hail Mary here. A Hail Mary hope. It looks like... How, can I get those? Okay. Going to get rid of that stuff on the bottom of the screen so you guys can see this incoming. Look at this. This is a Death Armada if I've ever seen one. Diving into the main... Moving with some Zelts to the north. Going to try to take a third. Leave his front completely undefended. Working on, is he just going to power down that lair? He's working on that lair. The drones are already out. The, the Corsairs moving their way across. They want to see if they can catch something. And he, wow, he takes down the lair. Takes down the lair critically. Is establishing his third base simultaneously. And will he be able, is he he's just going to leave those zealots to die? That's what zealots are there for. That's what zealots are good at. That's what they're going to do. And he's going to try to establish that additional base. And just hope that, yeah, Machine pulls back his entire army. His entire army, and look at this, he has nothing. Okay, now he has some stuff on the front, but this would not have been able to stand to that entire Hydralisk army. So almost playing a mind game, where it's like, okay, you went for that exchange before, and it really hurt you. Now you're going to go for that exchange again, and he, now Rhoda got the much better exchange. They're critically getting the lair, which is going to delay, first of all, a bunch of tech. It's going to 
stop a bunch of the additional upgrades. It's going to really slow down. I mean, what is it going to be like five? I should actually learn this. It's going to be like something like six minutes before he can hit that late game hive tech. And Rhoda has got his third up. He's got a sizable army. Let's go see. Go ahead and see if I can find. Oop, that's the wrong panel. This is the panel I'm looking for. He's got level two weapons, level two armor on the way. So I think he might be able to get an upgrade advantage. Might be able to sneak an upgrade advantage out of this. Level two range attack is there for machine. So he's mostly focused on a, where does he, did he sneak that, that upgrade or did he have another layer that he's, okay, he built another pre preventative. I think when he saw he was losing that, he decided to sneak another layer at that third. So it's not as big or critical a loss as I thought. Rhoda trying to catch these Hydralisks. He is catching them piecemeal, which is exactly what we want to do. Unfortunately, not the best storms. He's getting a lot of his zealots. Needs to defend this to take his third. The Hydralisks trying to sneak around, but Rhoda doing a good job of keeping a defensive kind of vanguard around his high templar <clears throat> which they still might get taken out just because there's a huge volume of hydralisks here but they're the last units to get taken out so they're able to expend every single one of their storms and really thin that herd out these units i'm not sure what they're out there thinking they're going to do so now rhoda in a desperate situation where he has a lot of territory to cover he's got a lot of supply and shuttles i guess he never stopped producing shuttles he's getting a reaver out here the problem with having shuttles like this is you need to have an army in there in order to do something with it. Queen's Nest down, Hive upgrading for Machine. So kudos to Machine to realizing that, okay, I'm just going to lose that layer. So let me very quickly drop down, or maybe even he built that secondary preventively. People go ahead and look back in the replay and you let me know in the comments when it happened, when he built that layer. Because that was a really heads up maneuver from Machine, I gotta say. Very heads up. A huge amount of Hydralisks now pounding down on this third expansion, and I do not think this is going to stand. I think that might be GG from Rhoda. Clever idea. Nice attempt, but yeah. Unfortunately, Machine's economy just too strong, I think. We will see. And you can just see Machine still still respecting the drop. Still respecting it, because he's got all sorts of Hydralisks out there. Good storm. But honestly, I think it's a bit too little too late. Upon losing that third, this is going to put Rhoda basically all in. And most of, his, <laughs> most of his supply is in shuttles. And even if he does get a shuttle down here, yeah, there's GG. Good play. Uh, fun play from Rhoda. Fun to see. If you guys haven't already seen it, uh, seen if you have not already seen it, I'm not trying to say this. English is weird sometimes. In the past, if you have not, check out Rhoda's big fat map pack. It has a bunch of UMS. In fact, I kind of want to play some UMS out of that on stream with some people. Good turnaround attempt. Fun game to watch overall. Check out Rota's stream, which I think is just Rota on Twitch. Or just pick him around when he's uh, doing the live stream. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Once again, if you wanted to catch this live, I'm trying to make a schedule out of Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, streaming live stuff. I'm going to move into another game. So there, I do have a live stream audience. Uh, which is here in the background. But, uh, yeah, Tuesdays and Thursdays, somewhere around 11, sometimes maybe as early as 10. It's a rough schedule. That's all I can. It's all I can promise. It's all I can promise. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Moving on to the next match. Thanks for listening.